when people die, it's up to the rest of us who are still here to tell their life stories. That's how they live on. And that's why we call this podcast Immortalized. Welcome. I am Steven Siegel from Legacy.com, the world's largest network of obituaries. So we're going to talk each episode about all of the really remarkable stories we find in the obituaries and about some of the fascinating ways that people interact with them. Every day, our business has us living and breathing the stories of people's lives right after their death. It's a kind of biography that's wrapped up in a lot of feelings. And to a lot of people, it seems like a strange line of work. Here to talk about that with me today is my colleague and friend, Legacy's news editor and lead obituary writer, Linnea Crowther, who's been doing this for 21 years now. Linnea, is it a strange line of work to be an obituary writer? I mean, for me, it's my job, and I've been doing it for so long that it feels really normal, but I am well aware that to most people, it doesn't feel all that normal. You know, I always get those the question at parties, oh, what do you do for a living? And, and y- y- you know, I'm sure you've experienced it. Sometimes it kind of stops people in their tracks when you tell them, oh, I'm an obituary writer, right? Absolutely. They think this must be morbid. It, it is so not morbid. I mean, it, to me, it's fascinating learning the details of somebody's life and then, you know, figuring out how best to share them and, uh, and let people know what was important about this interesting person. But in in reality, it it is kind of a weird job when I think about it. And, you know, one way that it's weird is, so for most people, you maybe vividly remember where you were when JFK died, or, you know, for a different generation, maybe it's when you learned that Princess Diana had died or, you know, some other really uh, important celebrity death. For us, we know where we were when everybody died. You know, I remember when Corey Monteith, who was one of the stars of Glee, died. I learned about that at the drive-in movie theater. And I spent the entire movie fretting about not being home to write this obit. And then I did at 2 a.m. when I got home from the drive-in, I wrote his obit. I will never forget that it was Christmas Day when I looked at the news and saw that George Michael had died. And that meant that I was going to be spending the next couple hours of my Christmas trying to write the story of George Michael's life for people who needed to hear it today. So when a celebrity dies, you know, people like me and Stephen have a job to do and we have to do it fast. We need to to get going writing that obituary so that we can get it online or in the newspaper as soon as possible because people want to know that story and they want to be able to read it and to react to it too. And one of the things that's so powerful about obituaries online is that you're able to react to them right there on the same page. If you read down to the bottom of an obituary on Legacy, you'll find the guest book where people leave comments, where they express sympathy, where they offer condolences. And this is something I think we see starting immediately after the obituary is published. And usually it continues for several days and sometimes it continues for years, right? Yeah, we have guest books from the early days of Legacy that still get frequent signatures. And one of the things that's so interesting about this is that it isn't just obituaries for people's family and friends and loved ones that keep drawing all these emotional comments for years, is it? No, uh, the celebrity obituaries also have guest books and they get such similar types of comments as, as, as you know, the, the regular folks. Comments from people who felt like they knew these celebrities and who felt love for them. So I'd like to talk today about why. Why do people respond so powerfully to these stories about people they didn't even know? And the place where we start is those guest books is the place under the obituaries where everyone is expressing their reaction. Because what we see at Legacy that everyone else doesn't realize is just how many people comment on some of these guest books. And there are two 
obituaries that stick out in my mind as perfect examples. And they're both for famous people, but they're for people who were very different kinds of famous. And one of them is very recent. One of them is Alex Trebek. Can you talk a little bit about Trebek and his obituary and what his life's impact looked like at that news headline level? I, the thing that I keep remembering specifically is that Alex Trebek hosted Jeopardy for 37 years. And there was this amazing consistency in those 37 years. Jeopardy didn't change much. You know, maybe they would change one small thing for a new season about the appearance of the set or you know, the, you know, the board with all the questions on it. Um, but if you look back at Jeopardy episodes from the early days, they're just not that different. And that is so calming and comforting in the often chaotic world that we live in, that people were able to have Alex Trebek, his presence and his show stay very much the same for them for 37 years. There are thousands of condolences that have been left at Legacy on Alex Trebek's obituary in the guest book. And some of them are really interesting. You know, here's one that stuck with me. And she said, I've been a watcher of Jeopardy since 1992. My baby son caught a virus and was in children's hospital. It was a bad time because my family was in the middle of moving into our new house. I didn't drive, so the only time I could visit my son was after my husband got home from work. In the hospital room, I fed my baby and watched Jeopardy on TV. From then on, I was a fan. When my son got a few years older, he watched Jeopardy with me, and we would dance to the iconic theme music. I wrote to Alex once and told him how handsome he looked in gray, blue, and black suits. I got a postcard that he had signed in return, in which he told me he would keep my fashion advice in mind. Ever since he announced his stage four pancreatic cancer, I knew there was a possibility he wouldn't live much longer, but his passing is still a hard blow. And I'm struck by the fact that this person had a relationship with Alex Trebek. It's, it's just that Alex Trebek didn't know that. You know, there was a, a theme in that entry that I found in, in so many of the guest book entries to Trebek's guest book that was watching Jeopardy with family, that this gave people a lot of positive memories of Jeopardy because they watched with a family member, maybe a family member who is now gone. And so watching Jeopardy now helps bring back those great memories of watching together with that person. And I have a couple that, that I'll quote to you too on that same theme. Uh, there was one that said, Alex has been a part of our family for as long as he was on Jeopardy. He brought us together in friendly competition. Every weekday, we would gather in front of the TV and spend the next half hour showing off what we knew and learning things we didn't. My mom passed away recently after a long hospital stay. And one of the hardest things to do was watch it without her. But we knew she was with us. Alex made us feel normal again. And then another one said, my father, who developed dementia, couldn't follow TV because he could not remember the plot line. But he could and did watch Jeopardy every night and played along. He was actually good at answering the questions. Alex's show brought him entertainment, especially in his last years. Hmm. It's interesting to hear all of these people talk about Trebek in the context of their families. It, it's very closely related to a piece of this that I keep seeing um, with television people specifically. So here's, here's another condolence from Alex Trebek's guest book. This woman says, my most heartfelt sympathy goes out to the family of Alex Trebek. I feel as if I have lost one of my oldest and dearest friends. So I can only imagine how the members of his family must be grieving. Alex came into my home every evening. Friends and family knew not to call and interrupt my jeopardy. It was truly my only absolutely must-see TV show. I learned so much, and Alex was the perfect host. And the thing that really strikes me, uh, because I see it echoed repeatedly, is this idea of telling him, you were there with me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. She, she used the phrase, you came into my living room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's this idea that with someone who is on the television, when something important was going on in my life, your presence was part of it. And it, it strikes me that that's like, that's really the power of television, isn't it? It brings us regular visits with people whose voices actually enter our home. That made me think of uh, another uh, another great thing from the guest book. And this was not a specific entry, but this was a trend that I saw across so many of the entries across the months since uh, Alex Trebek died. So in our guest book, uh, when you sign it, you know, it's a form and you fill in your name uh, and your where you live and then what you would like to say. And all of these are optional. You don't have to give your name or you don't have to give the place where you live. And then there's also a drop down menu where you can choose your relationship to the deceased. So you can say friend, coworker, brother, you know, there's a, a lot of choices. But you also don't have to choose one of those. It's totally optional and you could submit your entry without it. But so many people who signed Trebek's guest book chose friend. Wow. It specifically wanted to be listed as Alex Trebek's friend. It says something, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter to them that the relationship is one way. It's right. it's still real. Yeah. I'll also just share maybe my my favorite short entry from his guest book, which was, if there was one person on this earth that I could revive and make immortal, it would be Alex Trebek. Wow. Yep. One person on the earth. And they chose Alex Trebek. So let's pause there. And take a look at someone else. Alex Trebek is the person whose obituary in the past few months has gotten the strongest, you know, outpouring of sympathy online on legacy. But when we when we look back historically through all the obituaries we've ever published, the one that has received the most number of condolences is the obituary of Rosa Parks, who died in 2005. Talk to me a little bit about your perspective on Rosa Parks' obituary. What I see over and over and over in her guest book is the words, thank you. That is what people feel for Rosa Parks, I think, is a, is a deep gratitude for the way that she changed the world. She wasn't the only person involved in these events that changed the world, but she was such an important catalyst. And she did it in such a gentle way. And I think that's really appealing to a lot of people that she was this quiet, gentle woman who took a stand in a very different way than most of the other civil rights icons that we know. For one thing, She's one of the very few women who is an icon of civil rights, Uh, especially during that time, during the 50s and 60s. Most of the leaders of the movement were men. And the other few women who, who we have gotten to know well as civil rights icons were more like support staff or nurturers. Coretta Scott King was a very important nurturer to the leaders of the movement. But Rosa Parks did a thing by, you know, by by making her stand, well, the opposite of making a stand, by refusing to stand on the bus that day. She, she you know, she, she was an active leader of the civil rights movement and also this gentle, nurturing, womanly presence in the civil rights movement. I saw one comment where a woman wrote, I had the honor, and I do mean honor, to be able to view Mrs. Parks as she laid in rest in the state capitol. As the replica of the bus drove past all those people, it was breathtaking. It's amazing how a woman so small could make such a huge impact on the world. And then someone else um, the same day said something that was in the same kind of space. She wrote, Upon meeting Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Abraham Lincoln said, So you're the little lady who started this big war. 
The same might be said of Mrs. Parks and the civil rights movement, begun nearly a century later that achieved rights for our people that should have been assured at the end of the Civil War. Thank you. Your your first example that you shared uh, made me think of one that I had read, the ways that, that she inspired people um, and, and the ways that people were personally affected by, you know, in this case, you, you said when, when she was lying in, in repose and, the, and this was someone who had attended her funeral. So this person said, I have never voted in my life, but after attending her funeral in Detroit, I'm going to the polls and I'm going to vote. I'm going to pick up the cross that she left behind and bear it. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. Here's one that says something similar, but maybe even more basic. She wrote, it has been said one voice will not make a difference. And you prove that to be wrong. Thank you for not giving up your seat. And I felt like that so simply and clearly drew the connection between what people watch someone do and what they are prepared to believe and do in their life. That's such a, a fundamental example of what someone's legacy can be. The, the taking of an aspect of someone's life who is gone and incorporating it into their own. Now, as you mentioned, uh, you know, she, she died in 2005. And of course, at that time, there was a huge outpouring. I, I was I was already working at Legacy at that time. And I remember this guest book kept us busy. It was very big. Uh, but people have continued to sign that guest book for all these years. There are entries that, that are very recent, not as many as came in, uh, you know, back in 2005, but but people keep signing it. And one group of people that I keep seeing sign it are students who are doing a project on her and the obituary came up in their research. And that's one use for obituaries is that they can be used in historical research. It's got a lot of facts about her life that maybe if you're doing a report on Rosa Parks, that would be a place where you would find some great historical facts. So these students were doing reports or projects on her life. They found the obituary and then they found the guest book and then they were moved to, to write in the guest book because do it, whether it was that they chose her for the project because they already loved her or they learned to love her doing the project, something about their love for her made them want to get in that guest book and, and add their, their name to the tens of thousands who, who added condolences in that book. There's a common thread there. It seems like people share this feeling that she was the best of us. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned that there's so many people who say thank you to her directly in response to the obituary. And two other words I saw a ton of in those condolences were bravery and sacrifice. And courage. I have that and one courage. In, in my mind, too. But yes, those are very common themes. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your sacrifice. And there's just there are all these people responding to Rosa Parks as someone who is willing to face the consequences of doing the right thing. We all need the example of someone who lives the right life. She changed the world with intent. And there's a quote from her where she's addressing this, I was tired. It's not a meme. I can't think of the word, but she's, she was addressing, you know, the, I was tired legend. And what she said was the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. And that, that quote makes me love her. So Rosa Parks' story and Alex Trebek's story are very different. They led different kinds of lives. They became known for very different sorts of things. And yet there are so many people who felt their loss when they died. Do you see things when you look at these two obituaries and the way people respond to them? Do, do you see things in common that explain why people put so much emotion and energy and love into strangers? Yeah, there are so many reasons. And, you know, the reason that you love one celebrity may be very different 
from the reason that you love another celebrity. But, you know, I think I can boil it down to a few key things. One of them is that, you know, maybe you really loved whatever their um, output was, whether they were uh, musicians and you loved their music or an actor, you loved their performances or a game show host and you loved their game show. And I think especially that applies to things that we grew up with that is always going to be a fond memory of the things that you watched and listened to when you were a kid, when you were a teenager in those really formative years. And and I think that that can even extend to things like the activism of Rosa Parks that was an important lesson that you learned in your formative years. So you always remember that person fondly. Um, I think another reason that we would love a celebrity is because they feel like someone that we could have known or would have wanted to know in real life. And, you know, there's one obituary that we published a couple of years ago for a reality TV star, uh, Beth Chapman from Dog the Bounty Hunter. And it was an incredibly popular obituary and guest book. Uh, and, and I don't think we anticipated how, how popular it was going to be. But I think that that people really loved her because she felt so real. She, I don't think that she seemed at arm's length, like maybe some celebrities do. She felt like she was on a level that, that, that was attainable and that she was someone that if we had the opportunity, we would have a great time sitting down with her and having a fun conversation with her. Um, and I think that, that that's also something that can easily apply to both Trebek and Parks in very different ways. You know, probably the, the meeting that we could have had with Alex Trebek would have been a really different one from the meeting we would imagine with Rosa Parks, but how incredible would it have been to have had a chance to sit down with, with either one of them. Right. And, and another reason that, that really, I think that people love a celebrity and would want to click on their obituary when they see it is that they found this person attractive in some way. We really respond to beauty and that does not necessarily just mean, you know, physical beauty, although it's a big thing. But there are there are a lot of things that that can make a person beautiful. And I think that when we look at a picture of Rosa Parks, my God, she was beautiful. And part of that is her physical appearance. But a really big part of it is that we know that her soul was so beautiful and that that comes through when we look at a picture of her. And, you know, to that point, Alex Trebek was was also, I think, considered very attractive by a lot of people. And and really, a, a thing that I saw mentioned in a few guest book entries was how dapper, you know, he looked in, in his suits. He always had this beautiful wardrobe um, and always looked so professional and handsome. And then one thing that we learned shortly after his death was that his beautiful wardrobe of suits was donated to um, the Doe Fund which is a nonprofit that serves homeless and underprivileged men who are in job training and need to look good for an interview. And I mean, imagine, number one, getting to look as good as Alex Trebek when you're going for that big job interview. And, and, and I think that's just something that, that speaks back to that lovableness of him, that this would be one of his final legacies, is that his suits went to, to help people who were trying to better themselves. And his show was always about learning and you know making more of yourself as if his legacy wasn't already large here is this one last thing that we only really learned after he died and it really did illustrate what sort of person we thought he was yeah on that note i think that's our time for today linnea this has been great i hope that you will have more stories to talk about with me next time I cannot wait to share more stories. Thank you to all our listeners today. And thank you to Legacy.com, where now it is possible to honor someone's memory right on their obituary by having memorial trees planted in their name. You can do that for someone you know, or you can do it for someone you feel like you know, like Alex Trebek or Rosa Parks. Just visit Legacy.com slash trees to hear more life stories like these you can subscribe to immortalized on your favorite podcast app you can subscribe to legacy's youtube channel just look up legacy.com on youtube and if you're on facebook you can follow legacy.com there for daily updates 
See you next time.